Two weeks after the dam was blown, parts of Hairson are still underwater. Through flooded streets, we entered the worst affected area to join the region's governor and mayor. The task ahead, they say, is immense. We need to clean everything and restore the hydroelectric station and give people back houses which they lost and give back their belongings. The flood waters reached everywhere here, even the high ground. Father Grigory showed us his flooded church that had been used to store aid supplies and house the homeless. For six months they were bombing us. Every day they were shelling because we are on the front line. And after they now flooded us, we feel only cold towards them. And with that I can't even call them people because it isn't even true. Some aid is getting in, but also getting bogged down. Most people seem to be fending for themselves. Vlad showed us what's left of his house. He spent the last five years doing it up. All of that undone in the flood. Somehow, he's still smiling. There is a saying that every evil will be punished. I believe they will be punished. Across the river, behind his house, Russia's military isn't far away. It's only as the waters have gone down that the true extent of the devastation here is becoming clearer. Property after property completely wrecked, a thick layer of black sludge lifted onto the streets and the air thick with the stench of sewage and fuel. And the clear-up operation here is being made even more complicated by the fact we're just over the river from Russian forward positions. The economic cost is incalculable. This was a print works, machines and supplies now comprehensively destroyed. It looks like a natural disaster, devastation on a massive scale. Ships lifted and dumped on dry land. But this was done deliberately by Russia. A conference in London to discuss rebuilding Ukraine after the war might seem premature from here. Either way, the bill has just gone up by billions. Dominic Waghorn, Sky News, Fairson.